All right, we're in game two of Team Tempest versus Mary Todd Lincoln. It was uh, a 27 minute victory on Team Tempest side. They played very aggressive Dota and uh, had several kills in that last game. Let's see if Mary Todd Lincoln can pull it around for the game two. And I'm joined with Mr. Sundown on this cast. Hello. So we're in we're in the drafting and it looks like we have three bands on Team Tempest side. We've banned first band Tinker, Dark Willow, and the Tide Hunter, and on Mary Todd Lincoln, Quap, Legion Commander, and Invoker. I think the the Legion Commander in that last game was probably the biggest problem. He was really all over the map getting dual kills and other kills. So that doesn't surprise me that he is banned out this time. Yeah, 100 me is known for his on-point Legion Commander. I've seen it played many a time now. First pickup of Razor on Team Tempest side. And Lich on Mary Todd Lincoln. Very safe pick. Just trying to get something. Just trying to get a feel for the draft out, it seems. Now, you, you know a few of the players a little bit better than I do. Do you think this is an offlane Razor? for Team Tempest? From what I've seen lately, it seems like 100 Me has been playing a good bit of offlane Razor, which actually is a is a pretty good a pretty good um, strategy against certain heroes. Um, not so much against certain tri lanes, but from what we saw of Team Mary Todd Lincoln last game, if they try anything like they did this time, and it's just a Razor up against another offlane hero, there's not a lot of matchups that Razor is going to lose there. It may turn into another situation like last game where you're almost two levels up at level six. It looks like we have a Pudge pick two for Mary Todd Lincoln. Dyer's bad now. We wouldn't do a Witch Doctor. You know, and also picking that the Razor first, uh, it could be mid lane as well actually could even be a carry so it doesn't really give a whole lot out of their draft where on Mary Todd Lincoln we we kind of know P5 and P4 here so they can start banning out carries most likely for Team Tempest side I and you know these are strong these are strong supports you know a lot of control from Pudge and the sacrifice on Lich is pretty crucial to get get the XP going on your side very true Lich is always a very safe pick to have along with Pudge it's it's something you can get good set up, kind of like the Legion they had last game from Team Tempest, where you can just kind of pull somebody in and pick one off to initiate the fight. The Razor, though, is kind of a target you don't really want to hook, so he's got to be a little careful there. Yeah, I think there's enough time to get that link off uh, before he gets dismembered. So, if he's fast on his fingers, he's, you know, after the dismembers up, he's and if he's still alive, then he's going to be, he's going to have a lot of right click damage. Yeah. yeah. Get that eye of the storm going before the dismember. He's going to be a little bit of trouble. Zeus picked up on the side of Meritod Lincoln. Interesting. And now that next uh, round of bans, we had Sniper and Medusa ban on Team Tempest's side and a Faceless and AM ban on Meritod Lincoln. See, the Viper picked up immediately in response to the to the Zeus here with his built-in magic resistance. It's a pretty good pick against him, just flat counter-wise. And do you usually see uh, Vipers in this situation maxing out the Q Five and the E first to, to have the DOT magic damage from the Q and then the magic resistance from the E and then uh, put points on the Nether Toxin after after you max those two other ones out. I'd imagine the nether toxin I imagine I just like maxing first, but I imagine in this situation, depending on how active the mid lane is against this Viper, he may want to try to get his magic resistance up as fast as possible. So put the, the Zeus harassed is massive. So maybe go like a a one one three build at level five? I don't imagine so. Especially with this pug down the lane, which I'm not actually sure where he's gonna be. Slightly confused about um Team Tem um Team Mary Todd Lincoln's draft here. But I'm not actually sure where these lanes are gonna be. 
it could be a P4 Zeus. Five seconds remaining. I mean, it very could be. <laughs> I'm not exactly ha sure how well that will go, but... Yeah, I, I'm not sure Zeus or Pugna have a very good matchup against that Viper mid. Very sure. The... You know... Dyer's bad now. If, if you were Maritime Lincoln and you saw that they third picked a Viper, what what would you lean towards for picking a, a, a mid, mid matchup that would be favorable? Because at this point, you want to... You want have sustainable lanes and lanes that aren't as easily ganked or killed uh from what last game so you know kind of run run me through what you think you would pick against a, a matchup like that maybe something like against just a mid lane viper i think zeus is a safe pick to where you may not get killed but you're also not going to get a lot out of the lane so if you want to get something maybe out of the lane Maybe something like a Quap, which they kind, which they kind of ban themselves out of picking, or some other very mobile type, like a Wind Ranger, kind of like they picked last game. Just because you're not gonna fight the Viper, the only thing you're really gonna do is just try to get away from him and mitigate as much damage as you can. So either something very elusive, like the Wind or like the Quap they've already banned out, or either something super tanky, like maybe a Dragon Knight. You'd have to be very cautiously though. Looks like we have a last ban axe on Mary Todd Lincoln. You know, maybe what they could do is dual mid the Lich and Zeus mid or Pugnet. Either one would be fine. And keep the XP in your favor with the Lich just continuing to sacrifice the range creep. You know, if you get a level advantage after five or eight minutes, you might have a, yeah enough of a lead where your your spells would be more than what the resistance would be from his corrosive skin five seconds remaining if they end up needing to do that which they they possibly will depending on how her spirit roams but they want to try to avoid that as much as they can because the zeus here does need his levels as fast as possible it's as true. soon as he gets up his to five a level five or so he should be able to avoid most ganks just so he can be able to kill whoever tries to gank him. If a witch doctor comes over to like throw a cask at him, he can just ignore everything else in the situation knowing he's going to die and just get that kill before he dies. If he's not level 5 or get level 6 before that, he's just going to be the little short Mario man as he is and kind of just get sit there and beat on. Looks like Team Tip has been out of chaos tonight and pick up the Juggernaut as their last pick. And Very good pick, just a built-in magic immunity. Yep. Against this team for sure. Seconds. The real, the only thing that they have that goes through magic immunity is Five the the punch hook remaining. and dismember. Other than that, you know that yeah, that this... makes that makes this. I you know even with those two things, I still think that it's a great pickup for their lineup. And Caspian played that, and that's who I assume will be on it this time. Uh, that's what I imagine. He's a very comfort hero for him. Yeah, he played it really well in the last game. Several pickoffs on his own. It seems like a lot of comfort picks here, actually. Except for that Witch Doctor on Edge, which he may have actually been playing recently. Uh, Looks like we have a Tiny as the last pickup for Mary Todd Lincoln. Do you think that this is the... I mean, because that's got to be a carry tiny, right? I can only imagine. I believe what that's I imagine it. they're doing is probably dual, dual. I'm I'm actually conflicted. Maybe a dual safe lane tiny lich, dual off lane pudge, pugna, and a mid Zeus possibly. I'm not exactly sure because I can't. I can't actually think of a lane lineup that would help them here to where they would win the lanes. Even the very strong laning of Juggernaut and Juggernaut, Viper, and Razor. I also think that they're they're lacking their right click because Tiny until he gets, you know, three or four items. He, he's got good right click, but he, he can't be the only, I mean, he could get easily kited by the Razor and, and the Jug and the Viper. Uh, mostly the Razor and the Viper, but, you know, if if the Tiny does get uh, kited enough, then I don't I don't know how they're going to get enough damage onto these cores. 
Very true, though. Other, like, to be honest, the Pogna and the Tiny are pretty much the only thing they can really hit buildings with. So, if they get either one of them get picked off in any team fights, I don't see how they're going to be able to push down these um, towers. They got a bit of a mismatch in their team bats, and I see Zeus doing the very greedy build of going into lane with just a clarity, trying to get an early bottle. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, introduce oh. uh, Mary Todd Lincoln's side here. Oh, we, it looks like we might have... Oh, uh, we do. We may have a smoke kill up here. This is a very lone tiny in a very sad spot. He's going to get rolled on by... Oh, going to get rolled on by the Mr. Zen with his Orb of Venom slowing him down in a skin and a link. There's no escaping. And that is a first blood. Goes to the uh, way of Mr. Zen. A lot of joking pings from Chris and Caspian onto Mr. Zen here. <laughs> So on Mary Todd Lincoln, we have Kino on the Pudge, Eyes dot changes on the Tiny, Zeus on Lung Butter, Old Man on the on the Lich, and Pugna is the so the the phonetic gentleman. Yeah, we got Witch Doctor on Edge up on Team Tempest. We got Fafnir on the Viper. Caspian on the Juggernaut, Mr. Zen on the Earth Spirit, and 100 Me on the Razor. A wonderful comfort pick for him, which he should be able to deal with his lanes perfectly fine. And it kind of does look like kind of what I predicted here. We have a... We have the dual lanes, both top and bottom, with the Tiny and Lich, and the Pugna and the Pudge, respectively. It looks like they're just trying to win their lanes as much as they can. Oh, this is a very hurt... Is this a dead Lich here, or a very hurt Lich? I think he's got the movement speed to get out. Now, the interesting thing to me is I see L Lung Butter on the Zeus mid, and last game, I believe he played the Dazzle. So maybe a, a roll, roll switch up? Maybe he's just more comfortable on Zeus. Possibly. Maybe a hero specific line matchup. We have some action bottom. Already a kill. It looks like the Coconut uh, went out, and that was enough to keep the Pudge. Uh, locked down right in the Caspian spin, so he does in fact mm. go down. And we do have the oh, we have Mr. Zen sitting over in the trees, kind of perching, waiting, waiting for the opportunity. It looks like they may be able to go on this, go on this Pugna if he moves up again. Yep, they should be going anytime soon. Yep, there we go. I'm gonna go on the Pugna again. The Maledict is out. He's not going to quite have the damage. They didn't have the spin up. Oh, there we go. Didn't commit the spin, and he got away. But he's going to be out of the lane for a second with his low health. Looks like Lich takes the the two-minute rune top. Uh, both <laughs> both runes top. Zeus bottled and used a haste, the haste rune top. It still looks like Fafnir is coming out pretty good and in this uh, mid lane though. Especially with the build he's going, he has a one, two mangoes, and a shared tango with his base six regen. Not a lot Zeus can really do to blow him up. I think in this matchup, the important thing to do is, since Zeus has so much cast range, is Fafnir's gotta position himself in the middle of the lane, like in the in the river on his side, to get those, those wand charges when Zeus uses his abilities to to get last hits. Very true. He needs to get what he can get just to... Oh, he needs to get what he can get just to get the one charges and the regen he needs. But every time Zeus walks up to this to, to use an ability or right click to get a last hit, I he's been throwing a poison attack on, on Zeus every time and that's a lot of harass. Yeah, especially since Zeus is out of mana now with no way to really replenish it. He has two clarities that are coming out. He has two clarities coming out, but I'm not sure how how long he's gonna be able to keep those available. Actually, Pudge is starting to roam around instead of being in this dual off lane. Oh, 
We got some action up top. Hurt the ra hurt the razor a little bit, but not really able to kill him. Hmm. The Zeus using most of his mana to try to harass this Viper out instead of get last hit, which is hurting him tremendously. Looks like Zeus is going to collect that Invis rune uh, and actually use it. Oh, we got a fight going on top. 100 me, it looks like he's going to pick off the... Oh, the last hit goes to Mr. Zen, actually. He is racking up them kills. Oh, yeah. Just getting hooked down bottom. He's gonna get the spin on the Pudge. Not really. Pudge is not caring about the damage he has taken. He's walking away. He does have tranquils now, so he'll heal back up. Very true. 17 regen on the tranquils. We even got Fafnir even in between towers, is how confident he is. And Zeus has no mana again. And is. I don't know how he's gonna get much nope. out of this. If they get a nice hook off from this pose, they may possibly be able to kill him, but that's the only way I can see at this point. Zeus out of mana again. That would be a really hard kill. Looks like they're going to really shine up top. Them. On Team Tempest side. It's like 100 me shipping out some regen as well for his phase boots. Once he gets those phase boots going, he'll be able to chase down them, no, chase them down no problem. Do you think it's interesting that Fafnir chose to get two mangoes? I think he started it with two mangoes, or he got them really early oh, in the fighting phase. On the top, we're beating on the tiny. We got a roll from Mr. Zen here. If they get some vision on him, a couple more attacks will just cause him to die. They got him. They're going to continue on to this lich, not choosing the dotted tower. But the two mangoes start on Fafnir. I'm actually kind of liking. The, the what what he was thinking about here the start from the wand into the two mangoes just gives him lots of face regen which he can kind of just sit sit here and um, muddle through the zeus right clicks from all the just spill damage from his last sitting oh it looks like uh, <laughs> here's going on the zeus just dive into your twos just getting the kills with no responses from anybody he's out alone with fights going on bottom the pudge dying out <laughs> in flashbacks from last game. I think that Zeus had to TP immediately, and he still might have died then, but that may have been his only chance of getting out of that. Very true there. He needed to be... He needed to just get away from that Viper as fast as possible. He's actually... Viper is actually three levels, almost four levels above the Zeus now. Looks like Zeus and Pudge go to the mid lane. Let's see if they can. De oh, they're denying the oh, mid tower. Oh, down the tower. Oh, I didn't hook oh. it. Oh, did get hooked. He's gonna get the Kobe. They're gonna end up killing the Pudge here and probably the Zeus too. They have nothing they can do to stop. And this was my fear: is that Fafnir is gonna. I mean, that is such a good matchup for him that I, I think it gave him the space and he's going to be a real problem in this game. Very much so. Being level 8 at 7 minutes when his Zeus opponent's level 5. Especially when it's... Oh. Omni Slash committed <laughs> so bottom. I wonder if oh the Decrepify... Mm -hmm. I wonder if the Decrepify was on cooldown for that. That Omni Slash. Maybe he just wasn't fast enough on the, on the trigger there. Possibly. He, do, he does need a... Since Caspian is 6 now, he does need to keep that Decrepify up pretty much at all times when he's near him. Just for that Omni Slash. It looks like they're going to kill this Pudge up here. Up he near did. mid lane. Uh, oh, oh, what oh a they stunt. hit the Zeus too. They're going to get the Zeus as well. Mr. Zen may go down if he keeps committing. But Fafnir looks like he is definitely going to be able to kill this kill Zeus. But he may go down in the process. Oh, he couldn't get rid of tower aggro fast enough, and it looks like the Lich goes down in the top lane from the from the Razor. Also the kills up there at the Razor. 
112 stolen damage from the lich, just chasing them down. That was an excellent boulder, boulder stun in the mid from Mr. Zen. Stunning both to collect both of those kills. The Viper does go down in the, but it's still probably a decent trade for them because all the XP goes to the Team Tempest side. Oh. It looks like this is a possible dead lich again. There's just lots of stolen damage where he can't even come up to the lane. Oh, we got a stun out. We, it looks like he missed the tiny. The hook saves him, misses, a, misses the rock, but he's going to get away. Yeah, it looks like we got a straight hood of defiance out of Fafnir, where he is going to be the tankiest guy in this game with all the magic damage. And Pudge just walking up to this Viper like he doesn't have a care in the world. There is a deny on him, though. <laughs> How did he... And Pudge, Pudge denied. Saving the XP from Team Tempest. Unfortunately, this is looking at, like another rough game uh, on Mary Todd Lincoln's side. I think the problem is is that Team Tempest has such a good synergy of heroes to deal with the with Mary Todd Lincoln's draft. This is hard for them to make space with what they've got. Very much so. They, Mary Todd Lincoln's commit, um, kind of communicated early that they were going to be a very heavy, very heavy magic damage team, and it gave Tempest a lot, Team Tempest a lot of time to just counter pick them. So a lot of their advantage now is just flat from the draft. But this Zeus still, this Zeus still doesn't have mana boots. Uh, missed the stun, but Zeus showed himself with the vision from the vision from the plasma field. If he can catch up to him, this is a very dead Zeus. Could not quite reach him. Oh, this tiny is really low in the jungle too, and I wonder. The Fafnir TP's bot and ults the... Oh. It's just straight TP and out, which is the smartest way to do it. And... Tiny on... Finds the tiny. There we go. 100 me does end up finding him in the jungle with low, low life. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Looks like they have three around in there, trap. Trying to find Mr. Zen, which is kind of still hanging around for vision sake. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, we got... Oh, we got the stun to stop, knock out the pug hole. Gonna commit spin, and that decrepified. Oh, we got the pug hook up on the hill to give this Caspian some more kills. Which all oh, goes very there. nice. Which all. Oh, it's gonna take down 100 me, damage then, and Caspian's over at the top of the fight. Gonna take out, gonna take out Zeus with his ult, and the, just the magic, just the dot on this tiny is too much for um. Too much for them to handle. Was that a full team wipe? Because that punch went down yeah, earlier. Was the, that was the full team wipe, but the, the respawns were so short that he responded. Respawned in the time that the fight was over. Battle Fury, uh, two minutes earlier on Caspian than last game. Honestly, he should be able to be going a something like a Diffusal Blade or a Vanguard at this point to be able to start running at these guys more often. Seems like he still has the Manta queued up. Going to save route. One thing I've noticed is that Team Tempest is really good about uh, grouping together and pushing down towers. And that, that really helps uh, get that team gold up and get get closer to those next items to win those team fights. Very much so. They only have three towers down and a 11k net worth gold lead. We got Razor with a hood of his own, kind of just sitting over in the woods, looking for an opportunity to pounce. 
Well, you know, with as much magic damage as they have, it, it makes complete sense why two of the cores would have hoods. Very much so. Pugna is way, way out there. He is about to get pincered in the jaws of Team Tempest. He has a TP available. He knows he knows where the Earth Spirit is. If he TPs out now, he may be able to make it. He has no cares in the world. He's going deep in there. He ends up falling, but he's gonna have the Death Ward on the high ground taking out the Lich. Maledic may take out this Pudge. I'm pretty sure that Pudge was fine, but he killed himself anyways. That was a very good placement on that ward. That, uh, yeah, ward, very much so. Putting it on high ground. We have Caspian up top taking out this uh, tier 2. While well, this is going on, so there's not Dyer's still a pretty big win for Team Tempest. Is under and we're back to about a thousand net worth lead per minute. 14k net worth lead at 14 minutes. Twenty-two kills on Team Tempest side. I think this was more than the previous game, if I recall. Yeah, I think the thing that it allows that is that their cores uh, have really low cooldown and can, can fight all the time. You know, with the Viper and the and the Razor just being naturally tanky to Mary Todd Lincoln's lineup, they can just run all over the map and very much know, so fight all the time. A lot of early game and mid game heroes here. It looks like Tiny's still working on his Echo Saber, trying to get his trying to get his some basic items up so he'd be able to farm away. It looks like we're gonna have. Oh, we have um, 100 mead down at the bottom in a little bit of trouble. We have Viper coming in to give him a hand. It looks like he takes one out by himself. He, never mind, he kills two of them. That's three dead, and he survived. Just a smidgen of health left. Mr. Zank him up in the urn. I think they had less than 50 HP. Oh, we do got a fight going on top. We got Juggernaut. Oh, with the unfortunate bounces. Bounces to the creep wave right next to the Pudge, uh, to the Pugna and the Tiny. Surviving though, they're gonna be able to take this tier one bot and probably the tier two bot if they decide to continue pushing. Yeah, and and that's that's the thing. All of these kills are leading to tower pushes. So very much so. They aren't really like even if if a hero does go down on Team Tempest side, they're still they're still getting something out of that. We're 16 minutes in and the Pudge is still only level 5. He doesn't even have his ulti yet, uh, which, is, which is a game changer usually. Very much so. He should be able to just pin one person down and be able to kill him. They're, they're pushing these towers down without even the help of their main core with Caspian here. It looks like they're going to try to use this Invis rune to try to go in ahead and get an initiation on one of the Heroes from Team Mary Todd, Team Mary Todd Lincoln, and hopefully try to get this high ground push. Smoke up. His ult is down as he was using it to suck off a catapult. We do have the six on the Pudge, but they do spot the very far out Tiny. Oh, they got the slow on him, and they're continuing the chase. Yeah, he's got no TP. He's got no way to get out of this. I don't see how he can survive this situation. Oh. Pudge revealed himself. He gets Yules. And now he is taken down. Oh, a wonderful Lich Ult into the big grouped up Team Tempest. This is... Ooh. Edge and the Wish Doctor barely surviving. The heal managing to muddle him through. Wow. There's just nothing they can do to stop them at this point. 100 B going in a little deep. Possibly not. Getting a rampage in their base at 17 minutes. Well played to go out from Chris, uh, from Caspian. Very well played. Is this how Dyer's middle barracks fall? 
and they're just pushing on these tier tier three uh, or the the racks mid. I don't know that there's anything that T Mary Top Lincoln can do to stop this push. They would need a push choke here and just be able to pile on one person. Barely off the mark. Pudge is able to make it. Caspian doesn't even really care about this harassment either. It doesn't seem to be. He has 13 base regen with that battle fury and wand. And has a healing war still available and 17 wand charges. So he is a tanky little boy. Take note three. Even is a, I want to say, quad stack. Um, bottom of his ancients, yet they don't even have time to take them. They're just taking so many objectives. That's one thing I did notice, too, looking at the scoreboard from the last game, is that, you know, there's, there's uh, like, five or six stacks on the Team Tempest side, and I don't think I saw any from Mary Todd Lincoln. Not that I don't, I don't think stacks really came into play to be that important in the series, because the team fights have been, there have been so many team fights, but, you know, those stacks are a great way to, you know, flash farm a bunch of gold for your carries. Very much so, especially since they just did the most recent. Here's a, this is what I was talking about earlier. You do not want to be grabbing a, grabbing a razor. Even if you start grabbing them, there's not a lot you can do before or after. Looks and like got... they're going to get two pickoffs out in the base here. And they're just going to waddle on and then go ahead and try to, try to get these um, tier threes down. It looks like they get another one taken down. There's another wonderful Lich Ult. Unfortunate bounces, though. And that is another team wipe on the side of Team Tempest. Going to be able to take another Rax off of that. Oh, but <laughs> trying to be a little cheeky, trying to get him into the fountain as they take another set of Rax off Team Mary Todd Sue. We're up to a 27k net worth lead at 20 minutes. And they're just going to keep pounding away at these top Rax. Now, if they, felt, if they felt confident enough, they could just go and try to get Megas at this point. Especially with the brand new items up on Razor and on Caspian with the Manta and Sanjin and Yasha. And they're going to continue just to push and take these bottom ranks. I, I just think that Team Tempest had, uh, you know, really good, ex besides their execution, their item builds were extremely good. Oh, as we have some action. Very much so. Oh, the punch denied. Most of what most of what seemed to play into this time of victory here is pretty much the draft that the Team Mary Todd Sue pretty much just telegraphed what they were mostly trying to do and gave Team Tempest a lot of time and room to really mold their picks around what they needed to do to be able to get a pretty easy win over Team Mary Todd Sue just from the draft phase. Oh. We got a hook going on. We got this massive chaos. It looks like Edge may go down. Never mind. Oh, 100 me finally falls. We got five ads coming off from both sides. Yeah, you know, even though they they lost the core and he did buy back, he must have. Oh yes. He bought, he bought uh, teleport boots and he's back there pushing with the team. At this point it seems like they're just trying to go ahead and just go ahead and end the game. Yeah. As far as I know, this is just a 2-0 series, so this would be end of the line for Team Tempest. This would be end of the line for their top two. If Team Tempest only needs a couple more wins, this included, to go ahead and get into the playoffs for the series. So, I believe one more victory after this, and they will be in the Join Dota League Season 12 playoffs. And it looks like they are going to close it out here. A 23-minute victory on Team Tempest's side. I think a combination of excellent uh, execution and I think just an outdraft. They just had an answer for every situ you know, for every lane.
Fuck. 